you just uh, throw your hands up ten times a day. Seven times a day will I praise him, like the psalmist said. Uh, do that. And you can do you can do this thing like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then in two or three more days, you can go one, two, three, it's a little higher. Then first thing you know, four, five, and then get yourself in the jaw. They work you have to work little by little by little. You've got to move. You gotta move. I'm telling you, I'm warning y'all, better move. If you quit moving, you'll just get stiff and blame it on old age. And it ain't the age, it's laziness. All right, Philippians chapter three. Philippians chapter number three this evening. We have a little more uh, advice for the new year. Philippians chapter three, and we'll just uh, give you these few thoughts here, and then we'll go. Philippians chapter three. Now, and uh, I, I was talking this morning about doing some things, get down to business a little bit more tonight about our practical Christian life. Philippians chapter three, and look at verse thirteen. Bible said, "Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended." But this one thing I do, forgetting 2023, those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before uh, 2024, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. In uh, five hours and 29 minutes, it will be 2024 uh, in this world. The Lord could come before the end. That'd be fine with me. But if he don't, we will be facing a world, living in a world like no other generation in history has ever seen or lived in. Isn't that something? We're like the edge, like the edge looking out where we've never been before. And the world's never been there before. The world's been in bad shape before. God destroyed the world there in Genesis uh, 6, 7, and 8. Started all over again and and then Sodom and Gomorrah in Genesis 19. But there's never been a time like me and you are living in right now. So with that in mind, what are we going to do? I talked this morning about doing some things. Tonight, I'd like to say just a few more things and then we'll go. First of all, I'd like to say in 2024, you put church in, in, in its right priority as the Bible teaches. God, family, church. And then others. One of the preachers preached at the uh, at the winter camp about joy. Jesus, others, and you. That's joy. Now, if you want to get your life right, you put God first, then you put family second, then you put church uh, third. Now, one man said one time, he said, well, uh, I had people tell me this. They said, well, if I please my wife, I can't please God. And if I please God, I can't please my wife. Which one am I supposed to do? And the obvious answer is, please God. You got to please God. And, and one man said, well, I'm supposed to be here, and I'm supposed to be there, and I'm supposed to work, and I'm supposed to go to church, and I'm supposed to spend time with my family. What do I do? And the man said this. This is one of the smartest things you've ever heard right here. Duties never conflict. Duties never conflict. That means God don't tell you to do something and then not give you time to do it. That means you're not, you're, God's not going to say do two things at the same time that, that you can't be done. In other words, if you're doing your duty, it is not conflicting with the will of God. And so put church. Don't, don't, don't say, I'll, I'll try to make it. Uh, make up your mind. I'm going to church. I understand it's hard. Listen, y'all, I've raised kids too. I know what it's like to have a bunch of kids in the house. Uh, don't even, I don't even know what it's not like. I was telling somebody the other day, you know, that people always say, I can't wait till that last one gets through school. I have had kids in school. I believe I've had kids in school. Good night, Lord, for, for 40 years, I think. Uh, about, about the time one gets to graduate, here comes another. And uh, just had uh, Ethan graduated uh, year last year. You're poor life, and I got one in kindergarten sitting over there. And so my school days are not nowhere near over, and I'm glad. It don't bother me. I don't care. I mean, uh, God's been so good to me. Uh, the least I can do is help them kids get through school and, and raise them and teach them about God and see the Lord. Run. I'm going to tell you something tonight. This is off subject, but I don't, don't ever feel sorry for Brother Danny. God's been good to me. I wouldn't trade places with nobody in this world. This guy stood up one time at church uh, years ago, 
And he said, uh, he said, I just want to thank the Lord for our poor old preacher. <laughs> about me that uh, he'd been through so much I thought good night am I that pitiful and really I'm not really I have been through some things but I'm going to tell you something people God's been good to me God's been good to me I'm getting what I'm getting off easy to what I really deserve I know what I deserve I deserve to be in hell fire screaming tonight and I'm not God give me a chance God give me a light God, give me a voice. I'm going to use it for him. God, give me some ability. I'm going to use it for him. God, give me some time. I'm going to use it for him. Now, in my philosophy is in our, in our home, you get up, you go to church. A uh, man asked me one time, it was Christmas. He said, uh, are y'all having church on Christmas? I said, uh, is it Sunday? Check the calendar and see if it's Sunday. You don't check the calendar and see if it's Christmas. You check the calendar and see if it's Sunday. Is it Sunday? Yeah. Okay. Case settled done. Uh, there'll be church by the grace of God. We have never called off one service at Shining Light Baptist Church in what will soon be 24 years in, Ju in July and, and ain't planning on it by the grace of God. If it snows that deep we'll plow our way in out here and get here if we can. That's my policy. My policy is if a kid is real sick and got something wrong with it then mama will stay home with the kid. Daddy will take the other kid and come on to church. And if they're really, really contagious, I ain't, don't get too righteous on me. Uh, I, I know, you know what I mean. Something wrong with one of them. The take, and then that night, daddy stays home with the kid. In other words, the whole family don't stay out because one kid's sick. You can't do that. You can't do that. I'm telling you, we're in a race. We're in a race with our own self. We're in a race with our kids. You cannot let the devil get ahead of you. You cannot. You say, Brother Danny, I just come in and I'm so tired from work. i tell you the best way rest you ever got in your life was sitting in the house of God with singing and preaching going on. I mean, you'll feel like Superman when you leave here. Uh, when God gets through with you. I'm telling you, we need to make church our priority in 2024. The devil would love to shut us down. Churches are shutting down on Wednesday night, Sunday night, have to have food. Get anybody to come on Wednesday night and cut out Sunday night altogether. The Bible don't teach that. The Bible teaches that we should get together even more that we see the day approaching. We don't need to be having church less. Lord knows we need to be having it more and more and more and more. God's people said, Amen. I know I'm preaching to the choir. Uh, you're here tonight on a, on a cold, uh, terrible night. Uh, with flu going around and everything, and I appreciate y'all solid members of our church. We got a lot of people, buddy, I know. I know if you're not here, something bad wrong. And uh, I know uh, there's a lot of people that uh, I, I, something always happens. Something always happens. I, that's why you're late. Something always happens. And I've been knowing some of y'all for years and years, and the same people late every service, and something always happens. Isn't it funny that the same thing happens Something always happens to the same people. And there's other people that it don't never happen to. Now the truth is, I ain't going to preach on that much, but uh, the truth is, if I'm supposed to be at church at 6 o'clock, I need to be leaving, ready to leave my house at 5 o'clock. You don't time it down. It takes uh, 14 minutes and 35 seconds to get to church. So we're going to leave at uh, 15 minutes till. Or, or, and fi when you leave at 15 minutes till, that don't mean you start putting your coat on at 15 till. Come on, kids, it's 15 till. I mean, you better not never get a job where you have to be on time. You wouldn't last a week. Look, look, y'all, look. Being late is a planned, purposeful, on purpose, bad habit that makes everybody else have to wait on you. And you think you're more important than everybody else. And honest to goodness, you know, I, and I'm not, I'm not trying to fuss about nobody. I ain't got nobody in mind. Nothing like, well, maybe a little bit. Uh, but uh, I don't mean to. Uh, but you know, you got, you know, I don't, I'm not talking to nobody in particular. <laughs> I, I'm not talking to nobody in particular. But look, y'all, you, you, can't, you can't just say, uh, uh, well, time to get up. I'm only here one more minute. Did you know I've tried it both ways? It ain't a bit easier to get up after that one minute. <laughs> Than it was the first one. <laughs> it it's just hard to do. And here's what you do. My mom always taught us, mamas, this is for all the mothers, lay the kids' clothes out on Saturday night. Lay the kids out. There's the pants. There's the shoes. There's the little girl's dress. There's the, there they got. This is the clothes. 
Got it laid out. And that way, Sunday morning, you're not saying, where's that? Where's my shoes? Where's my coat? You have that all laid out. I understand. You got homework? I got it. I got it. I'd rather you come late than not come at all. You're ugly. Uh, but uh, you don't work late on Sunday evening. You don't work late on uh, uh, Sunday morning, surely. Now, here's what you got to do. You have to start in time. One man told me, he said, it's hard for me to get up. I said, go to bed earlier. You know what he told me? I can't go to sleep. Can I talk to y'all a minute? Can everybody give me attention for a minute? Don't look at the phone. Look up here. The reason you can't go to sleep at night is because you've let the devil get your nights and days are mixed up, friend. You know, I'm stressed and worried. Get up at 5 o'clock tomorrow morning and work all day long. All day, 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. Don't stop. Work all day long. And at 10 o'clock tomorrow night, you will not be stressed. That's right. That's right. And then do it again the next day. And do it again the next day. What you do is you don't go to bed at 11 o'clock. Then you sit on your phone and look at your phone and look at your phone and look at your phone. And it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Then it's time to get up. You don't want to get up. And you sleep half a day. It's the devil that makes you stay awake at night and sleep during the daytime. In the Bible, that man was controlled by demons that did that. I didn't know what I was going to say. I had no plan to say none of that. But it's the truth. These kids want to stay up all night and sleep all day. That's demonic, y'all. God made the night to sleep in. Why do you think it's dark? Amen. Make church a priority. Get in Sunday school. Get in your Sunday school class. Get in the class. Get the kids in the class. Get in there. Let them learn the word of God. Let them never have a song that's being taught in junior church or their class or wherever. Let them learn the Bible verses. Let them, let's all make church a priority in 2024. Let me tell you another one right quick. This is completely changing the subject. Listen to this. Shun, especially young people, alcohol and drugs. Alcohol as a beverage has no place in the life of a Christian. I said alcohol has no place in the, in the life of a child of God. Amen. I'm sick and tired of hearing about this. Tell me about the church. I, I don't know what, I guess the Baptist church helps them about, right? Where they go and the Sunday school class meets, and it's like a Sunday school class, young, young adult class, and, and they all drink. They drink in the Sunday school class meet. It's a Baptist church. I mean, it's everywhere you go. And I, I guarantee you, half of preachers in Burke County think it's all right. We're here, at, it's, it's, Chris, it's New Year's Eve and have a little wine and not like that because they don't understand the Bible and they take that word. It, it, it ain't it funny to me that the, uh, they say the word hell don't really mean hell, but they say the wine means really, really wine. Uh, the word hell don't mean the modern definition of hell, but the word wine means the modern definition of wine. Let me tell you what that book said. That book said over there in Isaiah 65 that the new wine is in the cluster. That means it's in the grapes. Do wine in the Bible, in the Bible, that's our authority. The wine in the Bible was in the grape, and when you squeeze the grape, what come out of that was wine. That's grape juice. Then when it's fermented and it moves itself, that Bible said, Don't look at it. You don't look at it. You cannot tell me that God wants you to drink something that alters your thinking and makes you misjudge things and makes you have evil, wicked thoughts and get in fight and lust and mess around with somebody's wife. God don't want you drinking alcohol as a beverage. That puts me in a big minority, even of preachers. But so be it, brother. So be it. You'll never be, you'll, you're never going to be hurt by not drinking alcohol. It ain't going to hurt you. It ain't going to hurt you. I, I don't know this. There may be somebody sitting right here tonight. You say, well, I still think it's all right for me to have a little. It just calms my nerves. Well, they make medicine for that if you really have nerve problems. And they make scripture. There's plenty of scripture that will help you with your nerve problems. And work, hard work will help you with your nerve problems. And you don't have to get drunk. Amen. Amen. Yeah. No excuse. No excuse, brother. Leave it alone. Not a beer. Not a wine. Not a little putty for the body. Not a little, uh, uh, not a, you know, listen, there is no chance of your kids ever becoming an alcoholic if they don't drink at all. None. Liquid devil, buddy. Alcoholic, they kill my daddy and my uncles 
and thousands of kids splattered their bodies across our highways. And uh, it's a curse sent from the devil. Amen. Liquid devil. I'm still old fashioned. I still believe it's wrong for a Christian to drink alcohol. Amen. 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 And this. How about this? Be generous this coming year in your giving. Be generous in your giving. I get tired of people, uh, every time I preach on giving, tithing, some genius will write, write us comments on, our, on, our, on my sermon, and they'll say, uh, tithing is for Old Testament Jews, tithing for that, and they think they are so smart. There again, how convenient. How convenient it is for us to pack it off on the because we don't want to do it. Uh, yeah, 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 I hear you. Let me tell you what tithing is in the Bible. Tithing was before the law. Tithing was before Moses was ever born. Abraham paid tithe to Melchizedek, type of the Lord Jesus Christ, before there was a law under grace. Abraham did. And then it was during the law. It was at the end of the law. It was after the law. As Jesus said, I do understand that the New Testament does not command a Christian to give to him. I understand that. But the principle is taught all the way through the Bible, before the law, under grace, that we'll have all that I possess. I'll give the tenth unto thee. I've been paying my tithes since I was first got saved. They said, Danny, one-tenth of everything you make belongs to the Lord. And I said, where do I put it? And they said, in the church. You don't give it to the man down the road. You don't give it to the widow down here that needs groceries. Uh, you put it in the church. And the church kept the widow down the road that needs groceries. If everybody just give their tithes to the uh, to the Shriners or somebody on, on TV that needs, needs, uh, needs help, then, then the church would go out of business. The Bible said, bring the tithes in the storehouse. That's the Old Testament storehouse, the picture of the New Testament church. And we're to lay aside every one of us on the first day of the week as God hath prospered us. And I've been doing it ever since in the Lord's blessed. Put it this way. I don't believe the Lord, I believe the Lord will bless you if no matter no matter if you give a whole bunch more than that, right? right. Sure he will. You can't outgive God. So a Christian should never argue with that thing of giving. Amen. Never, never. God been good to you. He's the one that gives you a job. He's the one that gives you an income. He's the one that gives you. We live in America, the richest country in the world. For heaven's sake, let's do what we're supposed to do in giving in 2024. Amen. All right, let me give you another one right quick. Right quick. You go with the crowd that's moving for God. The Bible said, He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. You've heard me say it and other preachers too. I can tell you what you are or what you will be by the people you hang around. Amen. Whoever you hang around, it's going to rub off on you. Amen. That's right. It's going. You cannot. You can't get together with a bunch of girls from the from the plant or the factory or the bank or the or the or the hospital or wherever y'all where or the or the the school or wherever you work. I don't know where everybody in here works. You can't get together with a bunch of girls from work and plan a beach trip and I'm not even saved and I'll say we're just all, it's just going to be a girl time yeah you know, that's a devil from the word beginning brother that's a devil when you say no we don't want our husbands we just want girl time that's a bunch of little floozies wanting to go flirt around a little bit and, and, and test the water and get a little on the edge and sure God don't want to go with a bunch of men I can imagine these guys getting together and saying brother Danny let's plan a beach trip I say, get away from me, you purr. I ain't going to beat with none of you guys. Good Lord, I, I feel sorry for a man who has to go to beach with a bunch of men. He's got more problems than just normal wickedness. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Isn't that weird? But it's, it's just girls' time. Just girls' time. Yeah, yeah. If you're married, uh, yeah, listen. You <laughs> yeah, as I, I know girls, I know girls married. And she turned some girls, went out to Myrtle Beach, and they wound up down there on the back of Harley's riding with men they didn't even know. Just all in fun. Y'all yeah. ride? Sure. Let's, we're just at the beach. My goodness. Hold on. That's back before everybody put everything on social media. Now, like if you drop a piece of paper, somebody's going to see it. But they, they, they turn your cameras off. I'm going to ride this motorcycle. No, no. Listen. Hey. Go with the crowd that's moving for God. Now, I'll tell you, that's why you need to be in a good church. 
I don't think this is the only church in the world. Really, I don't. I, I think we got a great church. I thank God for shining light. We're, we got it right. We got our doctrine right. We're heading in the right direction. We know exactly what we're doing. We're exactly, we got faults? Absolutely. We got faults? You go around this town, there'd be people There'd be people all over this town say, you don't go there, do you? I've heard some bad stuff about that church. I don't believe I'd go there. I, I believe if I moved to a community and I was trying to find me a church, that I'd listen around and I'd find the church that everybody talks the worst about and I'd go join it. <laughs> That's why they did the apostles. They called them a sect. They called, it was a cult. They thought it was a cult. A real, I, I mean, if, you're, if the world likes your church nowadays, you got a backslid church. I'm telling you what you better do. You better say, look, I'm going to find me somebody doing something for God and I'm going to get in there and we're going to help push the wagon and we're going to get the job done and load the kids up and take them to church and get them to God. I'm going to go with the crowd that's doing something for God in 2024. Amen? Next. Conduct yourself by the truth of convictions, not by the trend of culture. Amen. Did you hear what I said? Conduct yourself by the truth of convictions, not the trend of culture. In other words, don't try to blend in with the world. Don't try to, don't, try, now, now look, I, I don't think, I don't think that we have to have a horse and buggy. Uh, and, 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 and not have air conditioning and, or not, you know, have, have a, a shirt and a tie and all that. Uh, I, I wear a shirt and a tie not because I'm trying to show off or nothing. I wear a shirt and a tie because I respect my office. If the, if the, men, if the, if the congressman centered his own TV could wear a suit and a tie because they're high office and they respect it, then sure the Lord, I can do it as respect for my office. That's why I do it. It don't make me holy. It don't make me holy. It don't make me, but wouldn't you think I was a little weird if I come out here and, on Sunday morning and I had a bunch of blue jeans with a bunch of holes in it and a, and a football shirt and I just said, oh, God's awesome, isn't he? Isn't he awesome, everybody? Do you feeling awesome today? You'd say, what has happened to Brother Danny? He finally just tipped over the edge. Yeah. Well, I'd feel stupid acting like that. You know, it's putting on an act. It ain't real. Putting on an act. If there's one thing I cannot stand, it's somebody putting on an act in church. Well, I just want to tell you something. You know, living over there cutting up, talking about people and everything else. Suddenly get up here. I love you. I so adore you. Oh, shut up and sit down. What you need to do? I mean, that's fake, man. That's fake. Uh, do it. Be real. Conduct yourself by the truth of convictions. Don't, don't follow the wicked dress style. I mean, uh, girls, uh, don't, don't wear belly shirts that show your belly. No, you older women, please don't. <laughs> but you, you young girls, don't wear belly shirts, whatever that is. Showing your belly from here to there. You know that ain't right. Guys, I mean, dress, be, be for God, I mean, the, the hair, Lord, have mercy. I mean, the hair looks like cotton candy. And it looks like, uh, I mean, in 14 different colors. and looks like it fell face first in a tackle box. I mean, fish hooks and stuff. In the face. That's the way God wants us to look. We're supposed to be different from the world. By the way, boys, you ain't supposed to look like you stuck your finger in a light socket. I, 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 girl, I mean, good night in the morning, y'all. But the Bible said, come out from among them and be different, saith the Lord. Amen. I know people say, well, it don't matter what, what you wear. God looks on the heart. Well, you're just a twisting scripture, uh, wicked person is what you are. To say that. It does matter what the outside looks like. You, it ain't God we're trying to win. It's people. And they can't see the inside. All they see is the outside. That's right. They shouldn't hear you flying down the road listening to music that ain't right. Amen. Dressing in ways that ain't right. They shouldn't see you standing in line at the movie theater on Saturday night going in to see an R-rated movie. Amen. Christian ain't got no business doing that. Christian ain't got no business watching movies with naked people in them and taking God's name in vain. What You know what blows my mind? I hear a lot of preaching, and I hear preachers get up there. Have y'all seen the movie where, and just talk about Hollywood movies like it's nothing? If I did watch them, I wouldn't get up here and brag on them. Man. 
Listen, ain't nothing good can ever come out of Hollywood. Amen. It's a stinking slime pit. Amen. They might put a good story together, but it'll have some filth in there somewhere to pollute your mind. Amen, preacher. All right, let me say this. Let compromise disappear from your vocabulary. We're not giving in. We're too close to the edge. We're too close to the coming of the Lord to back up. I like what Jack Howell said years ago. He said, there, he said, you can take my dictionary in my office. He said, there's two words that you'll not find in my dictionary. Quit and compromise. He said, they're not in there. You take the scissors and cut them. He said, they both start with a K. You can find them. Take the scissors and cut them out. Surely y'all don't really think that. I guess. What about this? Say amen out loud when the truth is preached. Amen. I appreciate Brother Mike. He's been amening me tonight. You know, that means a lot to a preacher. I can tell you people in here say amen. And I know you're quiet natured. I know that. But some of y'all need to get in the habit of saying amen to the truth. Not because you feel. Now, a guy can get up here and bring the house down. Sometimes we'll be preaching the glory of falling rain. And it pulls it out of you. You can't have it. Just say amen. But you're not supposed to just say amen when you feel it. You're supposed to say amen to the truth. In the Bible, you know what they did in the Bible? In the Bible, they fell on their face and they worshiped the Lord with their, with their face to the ground and all the people said amen. So all the kids, all the young people, everybody learn how to say amen. Not just the preacher boys on the front row. Uh, the, the, the everybody needs to say amen when the truth is preached. Practice it. Ready? One, two, three. Amen. Like that right there. You do that every Sunday. And, and, and when unbelievers come in, they'll say, man, these people are, are one. They agree. Amen? Amen? How about this? I'll say this before I close. Close your ears to gossip, slander, and vulgarity. Now, the truth is, the truth is, every one of us got stuff in our past. Every one of us. Everybody does. And it is not your job to call sister so-and-so and and tell them what you heard about the other sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so. If something's really bad and I need to know it, bring it to me. We'll deal with it. But y'all, we don't have no right. I don't and you don't either. I have have anything. Did you hear about what so-and-so did? Did you hear about what your kid did? I wouldn't have a bit of confidence in the blah, 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 blah. You know, the truth is, if everybody knows everything about everybody, none of us have no confidence in nobody. Amen. None, we, nobody would have no confidence in nobody. So learn how to just keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut. There's always gossipers in every church. And it's a shame. That ain't right. And uh, one of the preachers, who was it? I believe it was Ronnie, Brother Ronnie. Hit it good the other night when he was preaching. He said, we can, we can go down here to Walmart. And uh, there's, a, there's a, a guy on drugs. He's homeless. And he's left his wife and deserted his kids and kids and, 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 and uh, DSS custody and everything else. And him living like a devil. And we'll go down there and help him and love him and try to get him to church. And one of our own brothers and sisters does one little thing. And we think it's our job to spread it and gospel about him and tear him down and won't speak to him. That's bad, ain't it? That's bad. Learn how to keep your mouth shut. I never will forget old Jack Wood. He's rough, old codger. He's a cowboy. And old Brother Wood, he said one Sunday morning, he took his pocket knife out, and he walked over here to the side like this right here, and he just started ripping up the sheetrock. <laughs> Them people had a heart attack. <gasps> ah, ah, and, he, and he's cutting it up like that. And they said, Preacher, what are you doing in our church? He said, that ain't, that ain't half as bad as what y'all doing in this church. You'll come. Hmm. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Some of y'all say, oh, I saw those young people out there and they were throwing down papers in the parking lot. Well, they might not be in as much damage as you are with your mouth. The Bible said a tongue is the unruly evil. Make a covenant with your tongue. Make it shut up. Make a covenant with your eyes. Close your eyes to filth. Refuse to look at things that are wrong. Now, with a, tele- with a phone, that it's more and more and more hard not to see things. And it don't take but a split second 
You can be looking at something good, and all of a sudden, bam, commercial come on, and right, train yourself. As soon as that come on, don't even look at it. Do like this. Train yourself. Train yourself. And it don't take but a split second for that to get in your head. And then get down in your heart. I'm telling you, brother, we're, we, these phones are a very dangerous thing. Close your eyes to filth on the screen, on the TV, on your phone. Make a covenant with your eyes like Job said. Job made, said, I made a covenant with my eyes. Why should I didn't think upon a maid? Men, don't get your mind on another man's wife or on another woman at work or something like that. Ladies, don't get your mind. Make a covenant with your eyes. I'm not going to let myself go there like y'all say. I'm not going. Make up your mind, Lord. You say, well, Brother Danny, you just see wicked bunch of girls at school and they all dress wicked and I can't help but look. That you, I feel for you, but you just make up your mind by God's grace. I'm not going to look. I'm not going to look. I'm going to make a covenant with my eyes. I'm not going to do wrong. I'm going to keep myself clean. Because if you do wrong, it'll get you in trouble. You'll do wrong. And the Bible still says, if a man looks at a woman with lust that turn his heart, he's committed adultery in his heart already. With her. And sometimes, I know y'all, I know how TV feels about this, but sometimes if a woman dresses in such a way to attract men's attention and flaunts and flashes herself, she's guilty too. Oh, no, it ain't. Yeah, you're full of the devil too, buddy. Don't you sit there and tell me. That woman over there in, in Proverbs, the Bible said she had the attire of a harlot. She dressed like a harlot. What does that I mean? You know what the Bible says. Slits are for sluts. I'm just kidding. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> that's a little rough for some of you, but uh, it does teach that. It does teach that. Stay modest. You can be beautiful and attractive, woman, without having to flaunt yourself. Cover up your nakedness. How about that in the middle of, in, in the, middle of the winter time? Well, wait till June, preach that. But it's true. Make up your mind in 2024. One lady told me, she said, well, Brother Danny, I, I can't go to the store and buy nothing. My girl, and, and I, I, I get that. That's probably, that's probably about true. You can't buy nothing. It's modest much anymore. But just do the best you can. Keep put, put something on over or something. But you, you better not be dressing wicked or you're going to answer to God for it. And you better not be staring at a man or you're going to answer to God for it. That's right. Let's start out anew. 2024. I'll say this and I'm through. Avoid all appearance of evil. That means guard your testimony. Guard your testimony. Uh, you, can, you can mess up the testimony and it's hard to get back. Sometimes it's impossible. And sometimes you can get it partially back. But your testimony is the most important thing you have outside of your salvation. Don't mess it up. And if you blew it at work, or you got mad and cussed or something like that, go back to that person and apologize. Say, look, I didn't act like a Christian the other day. I shouldn't have said this. Get, make it right. Let's all make a fresh start. 2024. Let's stand. Come on. Musicians are going to play softly tonight. Our heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. <clears throat> Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You let the Lord help you tonight. Here we go. 2024. In four hours and 56 minutes. It'll be 24. I'm going to the altar and I'm going to pray. God help me do better. Help me practice what I preach. I'm going to be on hypocrite. I'm going to practice what I preach. Will y'all meet me here and let's do this. Let's try to have a better church in 2024. Please. Oh God. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now. I ask you God to help us. Oh God, thank you for I pray for you. I don't know what you think. You can track your death. You can see. Call them. Okay. God. Oh God. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Bless our church. 
Pray long as you need to pray. Make a fresh start here tonight. Maybe you slipped a little bit. Not doing right. Amen. I've got three markers in my Bible, ribbons, two black ones and a red one. My first black one is in Genesis 1 for tomorrow morning. And my second black one is in Matthew 1 for tomorrow morning. And my red one is wherever I'm studying at or whatever. And uh, Lord willing, we'll start tomorrow morning uh, in Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. You'd be surprised what all was in that first chapter of Genesis. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, darkness on the face of the deep. God saw that God said, let there be light. Uh, God separated the light and the darkness. See, all the way through the Bible. Sin, righteousness, stuff like that. And so uh, start all over tomorrow morning. However you want to do it, you can read five chapters a day, read the whole thing through with plenty of time left over. Or you can read three in the old, two in the new, the whole old testament once. New Testament three times and have about a month left over at the end of the year to just read other other scriptures. So let's get in the book. Let's get in the book. Greatest book the world ever seen. Our forefathers, some of them didn't have but one page of it. And they ate, eat it up day and night. Memorized. Back with them. One or two pages of the Bible. We, some of y'all got eight, ten, twelve Bibles laying around the house. Let's get in. Okay? All right. All hearts clear. Anybody want to say anything? And be careful driving. About about three out of five cars out there, somebody drunk tonight, and so uh, honestly, I'd hate I'd hate that to be my hope, wouldn't it? You, I'd hate to be out there driving down the road saying I'm just gonna get drunk tonight. If that woman ain't at the party, I'll just leave and I'll go out. And I, wouldn't, wouldn't you hate to be in that kind of lifestyle? I don't care. Where's my husband? If he finds out, it don't matter. Where y'all going? Why wake up tomorrow and not even know what you done? We ought to be thankful, God. That we're in here like this. I don't want to laugh like that. I don't want to laugh like that. I feel sorry for them. Amen. Anybody else? All right. We're going to be dismissed. Uh, let's take time to fellowship before you leave here tonight. Pray for those people from Canada. They're driving. Pray for others um, that are gone on, you know, for to see family and friends. Uh, Carrie and them's down in Florida to see Dax just this week. They just went yesterday. Come back tomorrow. Uh, uh, other people uh, are gone different states, seeing other people and their family. That's good. Pray the Lord just bless, bless them all and get them back safe real quick. Tomorrow. Okay? All right. Let's bow our heads. Uh, Blake, we're sure glad to have y'all. Y'all be sure and see them. I hate to see them. they got to go all the way back to Panama City. Uh, you know, tomorrow, I reckon, or whatever. And so uh, you dismiss us in prayer, and everybody be sure and say hey to them before they leave. And it was Presley's birthday, but she don't want me to tell y'all the uh, other day. We made a big deal out of Frankie's birthday. And she was sick with the flu, had to miss the service of winter camp. So y'all, y'all be sure and, and uh, do something nice for her. But boy, she she leaves. You don't sing a song? You, <laughs> come on, I'll play guitar if you'll sing. We had birthday, but uh, it's Presley's birthday. Y'all be sure and tell her happy birthday. And uh, I got her. I get. I got a Reese cup in my office. 
So uh, go get one, okay? All right, go ahead, Blake. Let's pray.